Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're doing a comparative uh, between the MP5 and the MPX. Now this is a rather interesting uh, video because you're looking at a 1966 versus 2015 technology. Now Small Arm Solutions, uh, we've done quite a bit with the, not so much with the MP5, but the MPX, the Colt 9 liter submachine gun. Uh, but this is the first time we're really going to be doing a, a comparative. Over the last 20 years, the submachine gun has really seen its way out uh, of law enforcement military in the United States uh, and some parts of the world. Due to the fact that uh, for urban use or for law enforcement use for SWAT teams and so forth, the 9mm overpenetrates compared to the 5.56. The lighter caliber bullets tend to break apart in, in mortar and sheetrock where the 9mm tends to go through. And also, for as far as terminal performance, the 5.56 is vastly superior to anything that the 9mm can put out. Other parts of the world, it's different. Uh, other parts of the world I've been uh, while working for various companies, you will still see that these submachine guns are still viable weapons. But that's so, that's so true in the United States. It hasn't been for quite some time. Now, we look at the intervening years between 1966 and now. Uh, there was a very limited number of countries uh, who have, who have used the HK platforms. Uh, they used the HK-91 or the G3. Uh, so certainly these guys are used to this platform of a weapon. However, uh, as of now, the MP5 series or the G3 series uh, have, have really had limited use. The G3s uh, have been replaced by modern 5.56 rifles. Uh, the HK-93s really were never that popular in the 5.56 models. And quite frankly, you know, we do just have evolution. Uh, you know, we have technology that goes back to then, which at that point in time, it was, it was state-of-the-art and quite well. And we're looking at the United States right now. We're looking at the use of 9mm and 5.56s. We're looking at the M16 platform. The M16 M4 platform has served the United States in every aspect of law enforcement, military, and commercial use. And you have people who are very, very used to it. And part of that platform has been the probably the finest human engineering in, in, the, in the industry or in the world for modern small arms. And what does human engineering mean? That means your ability to manipulate controls without having to remove the short rifle from your shoulder. Everything is within reach of your fingers, so you're not changing your, your grip. Having uh, bolt releases, uh, lock opening on the last shot, things that will speed up your, you know, your performance with the weapon. You're going to be seeing simply by the design of the firearm, you can decrease nearly by half the time your ability to change magazines and manipulate the system. And that's what we're going to see with this, this weapons platform is really no matter how good you are, uh, just by limiting certain steps, you are able to manipulate the, MP, the MPX uh, much faster than you can the MP5. The human engineering on the MP5 and the entire HK series was rather poor uh, for as far as not having a bolt lock open, having to uh, manipulate the bolt from a handle that's, that's, that's uh, in front of you. Um, every time you change out the magazine, you have to manipulate that, uh, that lever unless you uh, change while you still have a round in the chamber. Magazines you have to cant into place. Um, a full magazine, you generally have, uh, you gotta smack it to get it into place. Uh, a safety that's very, very difficult to manipulate without having to change the grip on your hand. Uh, again, uh, those were situations that you had with a, a design from you know, 1966 uh, where it was corrected with the Colt 9mm submachine gun and significantly enhanced with the MPX. So we're going to take a look at the MP5 first. Now this is the new HKSP5, which is the uh, new commercial version of the MP5. Well, now we've added a SP Tactical uh, brace on here uh, due to the fact that uh, when I was evaluating this uh, this firearm, I was not going to be shooting it with a pistol. I needed I needed a good brace, and this was certainly the best brace that was available. Uh, it's very much like the original one, just uh, with, with with the brace on the end. You have your your, your two positions. Um, it's a, it was an excellent brace. Now, looking at it, what we have here is we have a safety. We do have an ambidextrous extra safety on here, but what we have is a safety that is very difficult to manipulate. You have to move your hand and adjust it so you can manipulate it. Now, to cock the weapon, you have a forward lever. Now, depending on the way that you want to manipulate this for, for loading, you would load it from the top, you would have your magazine, you would insert your magazine, and then you would you do your HK slap. Now the HK slap before you guys jump on me. Now there's two schools of thought. One is the HK MP5. The slap is okay. It's not going to hurt the firearm. There's another group of people out there that will say that it will damage the receiver. According to H and K, it won't hurt it. So whatever method you choose, is, you know, is fine. The other way is is when you go to reload, you you have to 
lock it back to the rear, insert your magazine, drop it down, or what you're going to do is you're gonna, just going to change on a closed bolt. We already have a round in there, which is a little bit more difficult. But pretty much everything anything that you're going to have to do, you're going to be you're going to have to change your your position the way that you that you hold the firearm. So the standard MP5, you would have a safe semi-auto. You could also have a safe semi-burst, and you can you have a couple different bursts that were on there. And for the military rifles that have the burst, one of the nice things about the HK system was you did not have a memory, meaning unlike the M16A2, where you would fire, say, one shot and then have to change magazines. The next time you hit, you pull the trigger on the burst, you're going to have two shots instead of one. It doesn't work that way with the MP5s uh, or any of the HK systems. If you have a burst, immediately after you release the trigger, it resets. So that was a that was a nicer situation. Uh, for the most part, these guns were used on semi-automatic, like like most uh, modern small arms, uh, like most well-trained soldiers. They're not going to dump ammunition. However, there are situations where uh, automatic and burst is is certainly useful. The trigger, the trigger is rather spongy uh, compared to that of the MPX or M16. That's always been that way. Uh, you have a longer pull. Um, I certainly find it uh, less diff you know, more difficult to get off rapid shots uh, with this versus an M16 type trigger. But the trigger is th just that is a military grade. Changing out the magazine, we have two posi we have two ways to do it with this one. We have a paddle and we have a more you know a more modern uh, button. Now, if you look, I have extremely large hands. I'd have to adjust my hand to hit the magazine release. Now, for as far as the front's concerned, you're going to be removing your finger, your hand, you're going to be removing your hand from the pistol grip to manipulate it with right-handed, or you're going to be using your left hand. So, quite frankly, uh, the the button style is pretty much useless unless you have hands larger than mine. And again, my hands are, are extremely large. So, this is what we when we talk about human engineering. This is what we're talking about: is your ability to manipulate the firearm without having to move your move your hands. Sights sights are quite nice. Uh, sights you have the diopter sights. Um, which, when you're using iron sights, are, are, are extremely nice. Now, when it comes time for modern optics, again, we look at the time and place when this was developed. It wasn't developed at a time where you had red dots. Uh, you didn't really have any kind of reflex optics. Um, so for its day, now you do have uh, mounts that you can put on these that sit up relatively high, but it's not what you refer to as optics ready by no means. And of course, we have a handguard in the front. Uh, when this was designed, this this predated most under 1913 rail, key mod, and M lock. So, in order to put any kind of uh, of accessory on here, you got to remove this and place some other kind of device that's on there. So, again, different era. Now, we'll talk a little about suppressed. Uh, you're going to see some footage where we're shooting these things suppressed, uh, both these suppressed and unsuppressed. There's one area where this thing really did stand out for me. Uh, and this is probably the best thing that I th that I can say about this over the MPX was due to the fact that you have everything that's enclosed back here, uh, you got less gas that will come back and hit you in the face. Uh, due to this being a roller delayed mechanism versus uh, a blowback or or gas operated. So I would say, uh, for as far as suppress is concerned, that's one of the areas where the MP5 you know did shine. Now overall, what would make somebody buy this over anything else? Well, you certainly have service life. Um, yeah, the best things that we can say about the MP5 compared to today's modern technology is you have a nostalgia because it's been used since 1966. It's been used by some of the most uh, well-known special operations teams in the world uh, in its day. Um, of course, we have movies. You know, we have Die Hard, and we have uh, you know, we have Lethal Weapon. We have you know, you, we have a lot of television appearances on here where it gained a lot of popularity. Uh, and you do have service life. It's been in use for a long time. You do have a lot of surplus parts that are out there because it's been around since 1966. Um, the cost is what really is, is incredible on these things. You're looking at nearly $3,000 for one of these, uh, which is almost twice that of what any Colt or any uh, MPX or anything else would go for. Now, that's, uh, that's H&K. Uh, anything you buy from H&K is going to be extremely expensive uh, by, by a long shot. Magazines are extremely expensive. Uh, you do have some different options now with the uh, Elite Tactical Systems does make a translucent magazine. Uh, talking to several people I know who like uh, MP5s, they say that the ETS magazines swell when they're loaded and uh, they're difficult to insert and drop and, and to remove. I have to say with the two magazines that I had here, I didn't see that. So I only had a sample of two magazines, so I really can't say. But most of what, what comes out of the MP5 is nostalgia. Uh, you don't have ambidextrous features for as far as uh, uh, you have no bolt catch. Your charging handle is not reciprocating, so that certainly, certainly is good. 
and we look at modern day training. Well, when you look at modern day training, one of the benefits to having, you know, uh, when you're using an M16 type platform, which most of our allies are, is if you're able to switch to your sniper platforms and some machine gun platforms and be able to retain all your muscle memory, all your training, uh, where you have the 9mm submachine guns by Colt and the MPX, which have an identical uh, setup to the uh, M16 or M4. So when your soldiers uh, switch off from sniper weapons to submachine guns to their regular assault rifles to carbines, um, everything remains the same for as far as uh, your, your, your change in uh and memory, you're changing your way, the way you manipulate. It's all the exact same, so you have a whole commonality in your weapons platform, which is also something also that will hurt this uh, unless you're using, you know, the, uh, you know, a G3 or an HK type system, and then switching to this. You, you certainly don't have that, and this is certainly completely different from manipulating an AR-15 or an M16. This is a whole different uh, method of operation. Now, reliability. You know, uh, your Scythe Correa, right this one's a little bit lower. You're probably around 700 rounds a minute uh, compared to, you know, the 850 to 950 uh, or even more with that between the MPX, you're probably looking around 850, and the Colt, you can look up to around 1,000. So you have a slower Scythe a slower Scythe right with the MP5. Uh, for as far as ammunition is concerned, these tend to be a little bit more uh, pin and more finicky. These were designed specifically around the uh, 9mm ball rounds. Uh, they don't tend to handle hollow points as well. Now, some of the more modern hollow points that have better ogives on them that are more consistent with that of a, of a, of a 9mm uh, ball round, uh, they, they tend to work rather well. Utilizing a suppressor, is, again, you have the benefit of the uh, closed system, so you don't get as much gas back into your face when you're firing it. Um, you do have a tri-lock as well as a standard thread on this one. Uh, more common was the use of the tri-lock. And these are very common for use, using suppressors, and they work relatively well with suppressors. Um, you also would be able to tune uh, this system uh, by the way you would change out your... Uh, there's an integral, piston, an inter integral system in here where uh, you have a piece that surrounds the firing pin, which... Uh, what that does is uh, when it's in the forward position, it forces the rollers uh, out to lock into the receiver. And then when the bolt moves rearward, that particular part moves rearward. And that's what allows the uh, the rollers to contract back in so the bolt can, can operate. By changing the angles on that, uh, that can make this more susceptible to uh, work properly with various kinds of ammunition. Except for when you do that, you're basically tuning it to a specific type of ammunition. But reliability, it's very, very well known for. Uh, using proper ammunition, it's very, very well known. It's got a, a long, a long career uh, being used all over the world. This has been used everywhere, and it's still in use today. Um, I can I recall uh, probably seven, eight years ago, I was in Bahrain uh, with the MOD there, and uh, they had brought some of these guns out, and they said, should we replace these, or are there, is there still life in them? Well, you had guns that were around from the 1970s, stuff that was rattling, and uh, absolutely, these guns were, were just... They, they were just beat, uh, and they were still in use. You know, I had recommended that they replace them uh, because you know you can only you can only refurbish uh, so much. Um, I've seen these in use in airports all over Europe. Um, they're very common um, in, in Central America. They're common in places like Jamaica and the Caribbean. There again, there's a lot of places that still find you know they were some machine guns viable. In 2015, SIG introduced the MPX. So what we see here, in my opinion, is probably the finest submachine gun that's available today. Uh, this is probably the most, mo this is the most modern that's out there. Uh, you know, during the original days of the submachine gun, the 1960s and forward, the two most popular ones were undoubtedly the Uzi and the MP5. Now, the Uzi, uh, just like the MP5, uh, they were unique uh, the way they were produced. Uh, neither one of them were what you would refer to as, uh, as human engineering or, or person-friendly. Well, what we have here with the MPX is we have the direct manual of arms of the, of the M16 weapons platform, which is the most common one used in NATO. And even many of the countries in NATO now, most of the firearms they have are adopting more of the M16 style uh, manual of arms. So, so we were talking earlier about human engineering, your ability to have a weapon. Now, like the MP5, we have a, a telescopic stock on here. When you have the shoulder, you have the rifle at your shoulder, right from your trigger finger, you have the ability to release the magazine, to release the bolt. On this particular model, like the Colts, you have a last open, uh, the bolt will hold open. So when you drop the magazine out, you can have everything at your shoulder. And here you have a safety. A safety you can manipulate without having to change your grip. Everything is everything is right there. For somebody who's left-handed, you have complete ambidextrous. You have your your safety on the side. 
you have a your bolt catch and bolt release all within reach. And my finger is again large, but you take that down even more. This is good for anybody. So you're able to manipulate without having to change the, the grip on the firearm. You have an ambidextrous charging handle, so left or right side. Locks open to the rear. Your magazines drop free. You don't have to cam them in any way. So with your with the rifle still at your at your shoulder, you're able to insert your magazine and drop your bolt, and you're ready to go get back into action where you're not going to have to drop it down, crank it back. So you have the ability to manipulate much quicker. Now we're going to see a couple of videos coming up, and you're going to see uh, manipulation of reloading. Now I am by no means an expert. I am by no means a operator uh, who is skilled in doing this rapidly. But what you're going to see is even with with my limited experience uh, with, with both platforms, it takes half the time to reload an MPX versus an MP5, and that is simply because you're eliminating operations and you're staying to your top. The first one we're going to take a look at is the MP5. As you saw, we had two different methods of the way that I reloaded. One was uh, from the closed bolt and one was from the open bolt. Firing your last round, uh, before you drop the magazine, you lock the bolt open, drop the magazine, insert the magazine, and then you do your HK slap or you release your bolt. Now, that is the most effective way due to the fact that when you go to insert the magazine, you are in a camming position and also on a full magazine, you tend to have to really slap that magazine in place. So that way the magazine goes in much easier. The second way was on a closed bolt, was it tried to insert the magazine first and then manipulate the bolt, which was much more difficult due to the fact, again, to get the magazine to seat. Now we're going to take a look at the MPX. As you saw, no matter how we do this, you're looking at half the time due to the fact that all we're doing is we're hitting the magazine release, the magazine's dropping free, you're inserting a new magazine, and then you're hitting the bolt release. And again, my right hand never leaves the pistol grip. All the manipulation is done with the magazine is with my hand. Now, even with the fully loaded magazine on the MPX, that's still much easier to insert a full load, fully loaded magazine on a closed bolt than it was with the MP5. So as we see, just by having your technology uh, to make things more easily accessible uh, on your with your hands will make you that much more effective. Now, my good buddy over at Nine Hole Review, Henry Chan, is an avid uh, MP5 fan, and I know he will argue with me uh, left and right. Now, uh, this evaluation I'm having, I'm looking at it not from a nostalgia or not from anything else other than a modern military is what uh, is a more suitable weapon for today's army. Uh, and that's the way I look at the differences between these two. I look at one as a bygone era and one as a modern era. Uh, the reliability uh, is becoming very well accepted throughout the world. So now we're going to talk a little bit about suppressors. Now the suppressors that were used on here, I had both a silencer co as well as an Atlas Defense. And we're going to see that uh, from the footage coming up that uh, utilizing suppressors both work 100%. Uh, both work uh, re reliable with different kinds of ammunition. I will say that uh, the MPX uh, worked much better with uh, you know, hollow points than the MP5 done. And that's due to the fact that uh, the way this was designed, it was designed to work with hollow points. Um, there, I tried several different ones. Most common one I used was ones that were manufactured by SIG. Uh, it was their V-Crown, um, both the Plus P version and the standard version. There's three different uh, weights I, I tested. I tested the 115, 124, 147, as well as the Plus P ammunition, uh, the reliability was 100%. First, we're going to take a look at the MP5 with a suppressor. And as we see, 100% reliability, uh, no issues. And again, that's the, this is the this is the one area that I did like with the MP5 because the whole back was enclosed. We didn't have any, uh, you know, hardly any blowback at all. Now we're going to take a look at the MPX.
as we see, 100% reliable. Now, I will certainly say, uh, due to this being a piston operated, it wasn't nearly as bad as you know using a, a, a uh, direct blowback, uh, firing a Colt type pattern. This direct blowback, uh, you do have somewhat of a decreased reliability with a suppressor, and you also do have a lot more in your face because the bolts unlocking before the, the bullet leaves the barrel. Much different compared to the lock breech uh, piston operated version of the MPX versus the roller delayed on the MP5 where you have locked systems. Now we're going to talk a little bit about lock breeches. Lock breeches is a, is a much more uh, safe design and it's a much more durable and accurate design than that of a, uh, a direct blowback. Now with a direct blowback like the Colt we have, basically the, the, the mass of the bolt, the mass of the recoil spring holding the action closed, delaying it just enough so pressures can drop so it can extract the cartridge case. In a lot of cases, you can have the bolt starting to, to uh, start to extract or start to pull that cartridge case out before the bullets left the barrel, uh, which is not a good situation. Uh, it's a much less expensive. Uh, it is fairly reliable, but uh, when you're utilizing it on a suppressed, uh, you're increasing your rate of fire uh, that much more, and you're increasing your, uh, your opening thrust, which uh, can cause issues with uh, firing out of battery. With a lock breech, you have a much safer situation. You have a lock breech, so that bolt uh, that bolt is not unlocking until that bullet has left the barrel, so your pressures have decreased. It also increases your accuracy because, again, a lock breech. Uh, with a gas operating system such as the MPX, um, requires very, very minimal maintenance being a piston system. Uh, MP5, uh, you have more recoil uh, versus you will with the M versus the the MPX, just due to the to the to the, the dynamics of the rifle uh you do have a cleaner a clean system as well uh you do have uh, a little more of a finicky system you know but both locked breeches uh or are a much better option than going with anything that is a uh blowback looking at the platforms the main benefits that you really do have with the mp5 uh, in my opinion are, are suppressed uh, you have a longevity of use. You have a long reputation of reliability. You do have a lot of surplus parts that are out there. Um, those are about the only benefits I will give this over the modern day uh, submachine gun. Certainly in its day, uh, it served very well. It served in some of the most uh, advanced and some of the most well-known SWAT teams and, and Delta teams and anti-terrorist teams in the world. Like anything else, we do have uh, evolution. You know, we do have uh, weapons that were great in their day, uh, and that as time goes on, uh, better systems uh, come out, uh, which are improved, and which is where I really feel we're at with uh, the MPX. I do believe this is the state of the art which we have today. We have a full 1913 rail on the top. We have ambidextrous charging. We have uh, excellent backup sights. We have the ability to mount optics on the top. This happens to be one of SIG's uh, red dot optics, which is excellent. Uh, we have, you know, we still have the traditional type uh, telescopic buttstock of the MP5. Now we look at the front rail. Uh, the, this front rail is probably the only thing I've changed on it due to the fact that uh, when I bought this as an SBR, it had a key mod. And the key mod, it was a lot thicker of a rail that came with it, so I replaced it with the Samson M-Lock. And this has made everything a lot slender. Uh, and I also got a uh, enforced tactical light on the side, which works very well. We have side-mounted slings, swivels on here. Magazines. These man magazines are manufactured by Lancer. Very, very easy to load. They're translucent. They drop free. Uh, they are an excellent magazine. We maintain all the manual of arms of that of the M16 with my finger here. I can manipulate the bolt catch, the magazine release, even the safety if I so chose. On the left side, I have access to my, my safety without having to manipulate my hand. If I was left-handed, Again, as I still, I have access to my magazine release, bolt release, and on the left-hand side, I have my safety. So regardless if I'm left-handed or right-handed, I'm right at home with this, this weapons platform. Disassembly, reassembly, the same pretty much as that of the, uh, the M16 that we're used to. We have a receiver that opens up. So utilizing this, if I'm used to the M16 or M4 system, I'm right at home. I can fire this thing and reload it in uh, half the time as I can with the MP5. And probably, uh, and, the, and the MP5 is probably much uh, faster to reload than even that of the Uzi. So, but we're looking at a lot of evolutionary changes. And then we look at weights. So we look at uh, those comparisons and length. These things are comparable in weight. They're comparable in uh, in pretty much every way for as far as uh, length, uh, overall length. So we, we can look at one and say, hey, well, one's lighter, one's whatever. However, if you were to take the MP5 and you were to modify it with a new handguard, and whatnot, and you're gonna start getting your weight that much, a lot more than than that of the MPX. 
But, you know, overall, the MPX is new. 2015, we're in 2020 right now, so we got five years of service. But if we look at where it's gone since then, uh, being used by the U.S. military, uh, it's been adopted by Special Forces. It's being used all over the world. Its popularity is certainly getting up there. You know, HK right now, MP5s are primarily bought uh, by, the, by the commercial market. Uh, that is not where they're at. Uh, if you look at uh, maybe uh, 20 years ago, you started looking at the and H and K was seeing the MP5 as being a weapon that was outdated, and they introduced the UMP system. And the UMP system utilized a lot of the you know the M16 type uh, features. It was a much better gun and much easier gun to manipulate than that of the MP5. So H and K had realized that as well. So you know certainly overall, you're looking at two of the most uh, durable, reliable uh, platforms that there, that there is on the planet for as far as nine millimeters. You have one that's older technology, one that's proven, one that's certainly served its time. It's got a lot of nostalgia to it, um, and it will always be in production. You will always see uh, MP5s because people want them uh, for any number of reasons. Modern military use, I think it's probably seen its better days. Uh, you have better options out now here in the West, such as this one right here. The Colt 9mm submachine guns, uh, unfortunately, uh, the design was never finished. The gun was never as good as it could have been. Uh, it was much easier to manipulate than that of the MP5, no question. <clears throat> reliability, uh, it probably was never up to par with the MP5 for reliability. It was a, it was a, it was a blowback. Um, you had a lock breach on the MP5. Accuracy, well, one thing the Colts were known for is accuracy. Uh, however, I believe they were, you know, the nine Colt number or submachine gun was comparable. Now, manual of arms, the Colt submachine gun was significantly easier to manipulate, significantly faster to operate due to the fact that it had just much better human engineering. But again, I, it was very difficult to ever find a situation where a lot of customers would buy Colts over MP5s. Now, there was exceptions. I had a situation in uh, India. Uh, where I was there working for Colt, and it was MP5 versus the Colt 9mm submachine gun. Uh, I was part of Colt's delegation that went there during the trials, and in the end, uh, the troops were asked, they lined up all these uh, special operations guys from, from Octopus and Greyhound, and they asked them, what did you like better? Which weapon did you prefer? They all preferred the Colt. There was one complaint with the Colt, and that was loading the magazines, because loading the magazines was horrid uh, when you try to load those with those straight magazines. Um, fortunately, I happened to have an Uplula in my backpack at the time and handed it to the guys. And once those guys got that, they said, we want these. So they bought the, the Colt submachine guns over the MP5s. And their reasoning was they were easier to use. Uh, they were more comfortable. Um, they were easier to manipulate. Uh, and that was the operators who basically raised our hands and gave reasons. It was actually pretty neat the fact that the, uh, the Indian Special Forces guys said to the guys, Raise your hand which one you like better and tell me why you liked it better. So each of those uh, operators said why they liked, they preferred the you know, the uh, Colt submachine gun over the MP5. I was actually quite surprised. Uh, I really did figure that uh, H&K would have gotten that one, but uh, it was interesting. So I know you guys do like when I do comparison videos. I'm sure there's some of you guys who are going to disagree, some are going to agree. Uh, MP5 has a real cult following. Um, you know, uh, the way that I'm looking at this is what would be a modern military what would a modern military want advanced firearms versus older generation and again that's just the way that it is uh, you know you have uh, improvements over the years uh, you have lessons learned you have new platforms that come out you have uh, things you you want to give your people the, the best ability to have a reliable system that they can manipulate fast and that they're they're going to be proficient and some systems just offer that other ones the way that they were made not so much uh, but we're looking at generational differences here. Now, I hope you all did enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better share. Thank you.